It's 2.30 in the morning on Mount Gerizim. The Samaritan village appears to be asleep and desolate, but it's not. We begin to notice men dressed in white who resemble biblical figures, coming out of every alley, carrying their prayer mats. They are off to morning prayers. We follow them to the entrance of the synagogue. From outside, we can hear the devotional prayers. As if listening to a voice from the past, a survivor from another era, a voice that has not succumbed to globalization. Eerie or mystical, depending on who you ask. These devotional mantras have been recited by the Samaritans for over 2,000 years. In Samaritan Hebrew, Samaritan Aramaic, and Samaritan Arabic. At 4.30 a.m., the prayers are over, and the Samaritans leave the synagogue, heading to the first holy stop of Mount Gerizim, the center of the world for the Samaritans, walking in the dark through ancient rocky paths, the first station is the place of the 12 stones mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 4. The ritual begins and the scrolls are lifted for the first time. The second stop is at the break of dawn, the altar of Adam and his son Seth, where Adam blessed his son prior to his death. As morning breaks, the Samaritans head to the site of the everlasting hill, mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 15. The sparkling of the Torah scrolls to the rays of the sun at sunrise, with a pastoral view of the mountains in the background. This is the site where, according to Samaritan belief, Abraham saw the ram in the thicket when he was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. God will provide. Genesis chapter 28, verse 8. Next stop is the site of the altar of Isaac, the equivalent of Mount Moriah for the Jews. The Samaritans then continue to the altar of Noah. For the Samaritans, Mount Gerizim was the resting place of Noah's Ark, and not Mount Ararat, the widely accepted belief by Christians. It's then time for the final stop, entering the everlasting hill, a site marked in the past by two monuments to Jacob. The Samaritans dedicate their prayers to the exodus from Egypt and to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They then walk in circles seven times, greet and hug each other as they have been doing for over 3,000 years, according to their beliefs, against all odds. Daniel Campos, I-24 News.